Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Sports Gamer GG. This is the ECL Pro Division with myself, Tegan. It's King Lime Blair. He is Brandon B. Major Bigsby. And Brandon, we had a fantastic matchup there in our first two games, and it only gets better from there, doesn't it? Absolutely. A great matchup between Hawaii Hockey and Reality Check. And now we follow it up with another great matchup, Deadly Phantoms and Herlev Eagles, a team that is in the playoffs as of now versus a team that made a surprising run last season in the playoffs in Herlev Eagles. This is going to be a lot of fun to watch these two teams that are pretty similar in talent face off against one another here today. It is going to be a great matchup. But before we dive into things, we did see the latest results, Brandon. So I think we should look at the standings as some games have been played and there might be some fluctuation there. So let's pop in and take a look at group one, which we just did. And that is going to be where Reality Check still towering themselves away at first place. Yeah, and interestingly enough, those two games are not officially in yet, so you see they're only up one point on Hana HC as of now, who have played today. That will increase to 31 points and a five-point deficit here later on. So, reality check well in firm control of Group 1, and you assume pretty much locked in, you would hope, to, at least in the playoffs with the leads they've gotten themselves off to. And it's been interesting to see how Group 1 has led off because there's so many teams kind of in that mix, but that top is so, so solid with reality check and Hana HC. The way they've played so far has been amazing. It definitely has, and we see Hawaii Hockey still holding on to that eighth place, like Brandon has said. And then if we take a look at standings in group number two, Brandon, where we will see the Phantoms and the Eagles. Yeah, and this is where we will be kind of focusing on here with our matchup being the 5 versus the 12. And there's a lot really to play for, especially for Deadly Phantoms, who are in what we mentioned earlier is a complete logjam from 2 down to 7, only Three points total differentiate all of those teams from Renescore over to Powerhouse. So Deadly Phantoms could very well move all the way down to seven, or they could move as far up as number two with a couple of wins here today. And not only that, they have a game or two in hand on a couple of the teams behind them, and they have two games in hand on one of the teams in front of them and Renescore. While on the other side, Herlev Eagles trying to get on the left side of the board need two points today to help that chance as Fiasco a little bit ahead of them by a five-point differential. So both of these teams need the points. They're going to play hard for those points. It's going to be a lot of fun to see with how much is on the line how they both look brandon Erlev eagles have a couple games in hand and only eight points separating 11th to second so you know Erlev eagles can come up with four points tonight and put themselves right over on the left side of the board and let's see who is or sorry let's see how they are going to do it as though they're going to do it with these team stats as it might be the power play it might be the penalty kill take it away brando yeah, Tegan, and you know it's interesting that you started out with that power play and the penalty kill because both of these teams really strong on the PK. They don't mind if they have to kill something off. Obviously, no one wants to take a penalty, but if you happen to do so, it's okay. They feel rather confident in their abilities to do so, but when they have that extra man advantage, not as much success for either of these two teams, so that could be something to look out for. Who is going to be able to step up a little bit more on that power play if that could be a difference, but I think the thing that really kind of stands out to me is the goals for Deadly Phantoms having that scoring touch a little bit more to start the season compared to Herlev Eagles but Herlev Eagles also haven't played as many games as Deadly Phantoms have so far this season so it's been kind of interesting both of these teams similar in some ways different in others they're solid defensively but Deadly Phantoms a little bit better so far offensively so it's going to be fun to see if Herlev Eagles can maybe step up and improve on some of their offenses performances that we've seen from them from the first few games this season. The Phantoms are a, a very good team. Play together a lot. The power play percentage not strong there as the penalty kill uh, very even there, Brandon. Like you said, as we'll pop over and take a look at who's going to be playing for these respective sides. And for the Phantoms, we have Playmaker SJ at center. Psycho Skills on left wing. Uh, Timothy on right wing. Jur X on lefty. Partnered with Frankie. And in goal, Dan Mole. Over on the right hand side for the Eagles, Brandon. Yeah, and, and a great lineup that the Eagles have as well. Vilbholm at left wing. Karani at right wing. Centering between the two of them is going to be Souf at the center spot. While back at D, Sandello and Dreamicki. And between the pipes at that goalie position, 
hike down and it's going to be fun to see if they can step up against a really good phantom team that as you mentioned earlier have played together a lot for a long time yeah i played together a lot for a long time brandon and that is all chemistry is it's going to be the head-to-head -head matchups that'll tell us that but the center is going head-to-head -head. playmaker sj going against suit yeah, and we talk about how the center matchups can be so, so important for either side. And it's going to be interesting to see how these two especially kind of impact that. Obviously, the points somewhat differentiating, but not as much as maybe as you would maybe expect. As Playmaker SJ, 18 points, but that's only five more than Suf. While Suf is on a team that has struggled a little bit more offensively. So Suf has kind of shown that he can contribute to that offensive play for her left. And so has Playmaker SJ. And the play the face-off percentage we talked about a lot can be big as well a little bit of an advantage for playmaker sj as well so these two guys they have pretty modest stats to start the season but they can impact the game when they get going especially being in that facilitator role and playmaker sj especially can put the puck in that a little bit himself too so these two guys can impact the game in many different ways don't be shocked if we call the name a few times both games of the evening the centerman brandon with an positive face-off percentage so we'll have to have a look at the game within the game as we pop over to the left wings where the phantoms will have psycho skills and timothy against vibholm and karani yeah and the wingers can be so important to getting those goal scoring opportunities but i think that the one thing that really stands out to me is the shot totals her left eagles a pretty large different in the shots that their wingers take compared to Deadly Phantoms. Pretty low numbers for Deadly Phantoms. Timothy, obviously, only four games played, which is why his shot total is a little bit lower than some of his fellow wingers. But then you add in Seiko skill 17, and it's a pretty big difference. Both of the wingers for her left Eagles have more shots than both of them do. So those guys over in the black and yellow on the right side of your screen, they will put that puck on net. They're not afraid to do so. They'll do it often, so they're going to have to stay on their toes. Deadly Phantoms are when those wingers have the pop because they will rip it and get that opportunity for themselves when they can absolutely and the hits from karani and uh vibholm as well 30 hits for vibholm 30 hits for psycho skills watch for the body be to be laid by the forwards as we take a look over at the defenders jurex and frankie for the phantoms and sandello and dreamicky for the eagles yeah, and I think that what really stands out to me is the blocked shots that each of these guys have. Seven for three of our players. So all these guys, can they can get in front of the net a little bit and deny an opportunity. And I think that's going to be especially big for Deadly Phantoms deep here because her left eagles like to put that puck on net so, so often. So if you get a few bodies in front and deny that clean look getting on your goaltender, it kind of helps things out. And maybe it will make her left eagles think a little bit about putting that shot on net and waiting a little bit more to get a more quality look, which if it's not your game, it could be a little bit more uncomfortable and not work as well as you would maybe like it to so those box shots could play a huge factor especially for deadly phantoms here in this one absolutely and not a lot of goals from the back end in this game like we saw in game number one for look for the forwards to absolutely light it up but not if these goaltenders have anything to say about it as for the phantoms we have dan mullen for the eagles tight down yeah, and both of these goalies, not necessarily the stats that they were hoping to see. Obviously, Denmo has not played a lot of games, but he does have a 1-0-1 record despite the stats being a little bit lower to start out. So I'm sure he will look to increase those coming into this one. And look at Tyke down. He's the guy that comes back from her left Eagles last season. A 78.3 save percentage, right around that 80% mark, a little bit lower. But he's a guy that can make a few big saves and take down the opposition when he is hot and going. So it's going to be interesting to see see if he can maybe have the same impact that we saw the goalies in our last matchup have the way they made those big saves there so only a couple of games played uh by dan mo in this one brandon compared to the 10 for tight down do you think that's going to have a huge implication on this game I don't really think it will, actually. And the only reason I say that is because Denmo is a guy that where he hasn't played that much this season. And it's one of those things to where, sure, you didn't necessarily get off to the best start in terms of the percentage of saves that you made, but you did get a win and the other game was kept close. They lost in overtime. So it's kind of one of those things to where, are you feeling just amazing about how you last played? 
maybe not. But at the same time, you were able to get three out of four points for your team. And Dan Mullen is a guy that has proven that he can play well before. You kind of look back at some of the stats he's had in the past. He's always hovered around that 80% mark that we always talk about coming from ECL light last season and only played a few games then. So he's a guy that's still kind of getting his feet wet in the pro division, trying to adjust to the pro division a little bit. It's always that step up from one competition to the other to take some time there. A big win, two big wins against Herlet Eagles and some good performances could really help that confidence and get him going a little bit. Definitely can, Brandon. And if you want to see more competition and enjoy the commentary today, you will be able to join up tomorrow for the ECL Elite, where Havu going against Yipya Vaskala and Faryastad going against HV71. You'll be able to join Sin and none other than B Major at uh, 1945 Central European time there, Brandon. That should be a great matchup to call the Sin. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Obviously, Havu getting out the gates a little bit slowly, struggling to start the season, while Yip Yavaskla, who were down in this pro division last season, they're at a right. playoff spot right now, really starting off strong, one of the top five teams in the standings. And then the other match of HV71, a team that's been a surprise to start out the season as a playoff team, and a team in Fetty is that one of the most consistently great quality teams in the ECL Elite Division. So going to be a lot of fun to call that with Sid, and can't wait to get that one in, because boy, oh boy, those are going to be two great matchups. It is going to be a fiery matchup for sure, Brandon. And we've got a great one here as well as Phantoms and Eagles getting themselves down to ice level here at Sports Gamer GG at the ECL Pro Division. We're going to watch Phantoms against the Eagles. We want to give an amazing shout out to our sponsors there at Kovalon Lakritzi, Wilhelm, and ST Hockey. Brandon, as we get into period number one of game number one in this head to head tonight. At Sports Gamer GG. I am excited. I know you are. We've got a lot of names that we've called lots before, Brandon, on both sides. So a little bit of uh, uh, a little bit of gold in the pool here, Brandon, that we have uh, per se. Yeah, some familiarity with both of these teams. We called Deadly Phantoms a little bit last season. We've called Her Love Eagles, not just last season, but in another tournament or so as well. So two teams that we're familiar with, two teams that maybe have aspirations to make it to that ECL Elite next season. The steps start early in the regular season against quality competition like they face tonight. Let's puck up the right-hand side. Timothy. Timothy sends that one through the middle. Can't get it through. Here's Sandello. And Dello had the Karani. We have the Phantoms in white, Eagles in dark. And Timothy gets it one across the psycho skills and they score early. Well, how about that? I was pulling up a few note sheets, grabbing a drink, and all of a sudden, Deadly Phantoms put the puck in the net two minutes in to this first game. What a way to start. And we talk about all the time, Teague, and how getting that quick start can be so, so important to seizing the momentum in the game. We saw Reality Check really benefit from that in the first two games, getting those quick goals early and holding on to that. Maybe Deadly Phantom can have that same little luck here, but a great play from Psycho Skills to get the early lead more than nothing. Luck is going to be brought in here by the Eagles, but it's going to be Psycho Skills who takes it away. Psycho Skills can't that one through. Dream Mickey Karani to Viv home up to Sue. He's bringing it in for the Eagles. Good poke check by the Phantoms. And that one's all the way back down into Eagles territory. It's Dream Mickey. Dream Mickey up to Karani. And the breakout starts for the Eagles. Sandello into the middle to Sooth. Sooth to Karani. Karani sets up. Looking for Sooth, but he takes a shot. And Danmo with a good save. There's a big save from Danmo. We kind of talked about how he's looking to get things going here at the start of his first elite pro season. That's a great start to this game right here. A nice sharp save. Stayed in position. And not only that, but huge considering they have this one nothing lead to start out. Don't want to let that up if you're the goalie. Here's my good buddy Frankie with the puck. Throwing that up the right-hand side. Timothy just dumps that one all the way around. Psycho skills. Back to the point. Jer fires it on. It's blocked. And Vibholm gets it to Karani. Good back check by Timothy. Timothy to Playmaker. Playmaker trying to sauce that one ahead to Frankie, trying to get in. And that's one thing we do know about the Phantoms, isn't it, Brandon? Is they love to get their defense active. Yeah, and it's something that we saw really benefited Reality Check in the last game. So it's going to be interesting to see if maybe that defense gets active and maybe gets a couple of goals from this Nelly Phantoms team. Ronnie hasn't poke checked his, off his stick, but he retrieves it right back. Ronnie. 
Down low to Vivholm, looking out front, trying to force that one through. Too many bodies in front, and here goes Psycho Skills. Drops that one, he gets a pass back, tries to carry it all the way through in front, but Dream Mickey with a good defensive play. And Psycho Skills almost with the second of the game. Ronnie, what a move to get into the zone, and he does. He's bumped off of the puck by Frankie. Frankie, he just sauces that one out into the neutral zone. Sandello to Vibholm, and it's dumped in here for the Eagles. Dan Mo, I think he's going to hold on to that one, Brandon. He doesn't want to take any chances. Yeah, I can't say I blame him. There was a lot of traffic there in front of him, too, once he held that puck in. So why take the chance when you can just trust your standard to win this face off in your own zone and reset things for your own team? Puck on the left hand side. Here's Dream Mickey down to Karani. Karani to Sue. That puck is going to be taken away and moved out here. Here's Dream Mickey. Dream Mickey to Sandello. Sandello claps that puck down to Vibholm. Vibholm to Dream Mickey. That's off a of body and over the glass with seven minutes to go here in the first period. Face off here between Playmaker and Seuss in Phantoms territory is won by the Phantoms. As we need to keep an eye on the face-off percentage here as we get another icing with seven minutes to go. Yeah, we kind of mentioned how that face-off percentage could be a big factor. We said it in Series 1. It applies again here in Series 2. And these are two teams, or two centers rather, that both are positive in face-off percentage. 54.6% for Playmaker, 51.4% for Seuss. Vibholm trying to send that one out. He can't. Frankie intercepts with six minutes to go. That one's going to be moved ahead. Sandello picks that puck off and he dumps it right back into the zone. And that's exactly what the Eagles need. Psycho Skills picks it up. Vibholm has it stick lifted. Good job by Psycho Skills and good puck support. But it's the Eagles who retrieve it. Vibholm back to the point. Battled for by Psycho Skills. Almost off to the races, but Karani takes it away. Karani to Sooth, down low to Vibble, it's Luz out front with a great bad save by Dan Mull. And here goes Frankie out of the zone, over to Timothy. Timothy trying to send that one through with a saucer pass force, but he retrieves it in the corner. Playmaker back to Timothy, fires, and a great save by Tyke down. Frankie behind the net with it, curling and holding on the forehand, back to the backhand, still holding on. It pops out front, and Tyke down just holds on. Yeah, and I don't blame him. You see Deadly Phantoms trying to push back a little bit after Herlev Eagles tried to maybe get a little bit aggressive and get the tying goal. It's kind of interesting. Things have slowed down just a little bit since that opening goal, but you can see both teams really eager to get the next points. They can really make a difference in this game. Here's Karani. Back to the point to Dream Mickey. He can't get that one through the D. It's going to be saucered down. Timothy first to the puck. He beats out the icing. Trying to take it out front. It's loose. And Sandello picks it up. Timothy battling him in the corner, though. Phantoms puck. Good job by Dream Mickey to take it away for the Eagles. And they break the puck out through Karani to Vibholm. Back to Karani. Good defensive play there by Jur. Jur X. Doing great for the Phantoms here as we close out the first period and a strong one here for the Deadly Phantom. A very strong period, Tegan, and it all started early with the big goal from Psycho Skills just a few minutes into this game as we get another look at it. It all started from that beautiful pass there from his opposite side winger in Timothy. But nevertheless, Deadly Phantom's going to be happy with how that period went. They get that one nothing lead, and they held on to it rather well. Not a lot of high-danger opportunities for Herlev Eagles, even with some of the zone time that they got. So nevertheless, things may have slowed down a little bit, but a solid period for the Deadly Phantoms. You go out with one nothing, and you hope you can build on that, maybe get a few more chances to make that a 2 nothing deficit as well for them. As we get a look... At our goal here, Brandon, and what a goal it was is that one fed right through and cycle picking the perfect area on the net. And one thing I like about that goal, Brandon, is it's not that high bar down. He just puts it where it needs to go. Yeah, and, and you see a lot of times to where it will go high bar down and you'll miss because you're trying to point it at that certain angle. But like you said perfectly, Tegan, he put it where he needed to go. He had a, a bunch of open space an open cage, no reason to get fancy and try to make it top shelf. Why not just put it where you know it's going to get in? A great job there from Psycho Skills to make sure that puck will be in. 
That's right, just uh, just enough to get it over the pad as he tried to put another one in there as we start out the second period. Phantom against Eagles. You see the respective lineup from the bottom left and right-hand corner of your screen. Phantoms in white, Eagles in black. Buck tried to be moved out, but it's held in. Bib home. Karani with the give and go, but a great save, Dan Mole. And here goes Timothy as he just dumps that one in. And remember that big save there for the Phantoms to start off the period. As Bib home laid out by Playmaker. As he collects his stick as he gets up. A good defense by Sooth. As he just passed it to the player with no twig there, Brandon. As Vibholm had to get his stick from the bench. Playmaker back to Frankie. Back to Playmaker on the give and go. Playmaker in the zone for the Phantoms. Back to Frankie. Frankie comes down low. Goes to Timothy. He tries to wrap it around. But good defense there by Dream Mickey and Sue. And Sandello brings that puck up the ice. Good back check there by Playmaker. He's going to try and get it ahead. He finally does. He got that one over to Psycho, and Psycho tried to sauce it across, but it's intercepted by Sandello. And it's been all gas, no breaks here for the Phantoms. They're going to go back to work. Playmaker, left-hand side. Timothy fired it on, looking for Psycho skills in front, Brandon. And that is a 200 IQ play to play that off the goalie's pad. Yeah, I love that attempt there. He saw Psycho skills in position to potentially get that extra look off the rebound. And from the looks of it, if that puck goes to Psycho's stick, there was some open net for him to maybe put that one back in and get past Tyke down. So a great attempt just didn't work out for them the way they hoped to. But has something to look out for. Just getting that rebound when you're in position like that, a really, really high IQ smart play there to just put that puck on and notice that his teammate was there to maybe capitalize. Here's Timothy. Tried to play that one inverted, pops through and almost onto the stick of Playmaker. The Playmaker intercepts on just shovel shots that one towards the net, probably looking for a rebound. The puck is down low here for the Eagle. Karani, back to Dream Mickey. Dream Mickey to Karani. Karani trying to bring that one down. Dream Mickey battling for it, but a good job here by the Phantoms to win that hard battle. And here's Sandello. Into the left-hand corner to Jur. D to D to Frankie. Over to Timothy, playmaker, and good puck movement with the toe drag by Cycle. Frankie fires up and's off a body and wide. Puck back to the point. Here's Jur. Eight minutes to go. He puts that one on. Routine safe for tight down. Timothy in the corner for the Phantoms. Behind the net to Psycho. A front of playmaker the backhand is on. But robbed. Psycho skills again trying to play that one into the middle. But it's intercepted. Good job by Sooth. He tried to bank past that. Will it be too far? I don't think so, Brandon. I think Karani's going to get there first. He goes behind the net to Vibble and looks back for Karani. It's on the stick of Vibble. He shoots. Great save, Dan Mole. And Sooth has it again. He looks back door, but nobody home. Stick lift there by Jurex. He's going to carry it all the way down out into the middle. Psycho fires and a good save. And we'll finally get a break. His tight down holds on. Yeah, the pace has ramped up a little bit compared to the first period where things were a little bit more slowed down after the opening goal. Now, all of a sudden, both of these teams are flying all over the place looking to get that next answer. Deadly Phantom's going to have a chance here with the offensive zone faceoff. Let's we'll see if they can do it. Here's Timothy. Timothy. Tried to get that one out front, but it's going to be picked up and held on here by Takedown once again. Yeah, now Takedown having to step up a little bit. And I think these two goalies have been a little bit of a underrated story throughout this game. Both Dan Mole and Takedown making a few big saves for both of their teams. Big reason this one is still at one to nothing. Here's Frankie. Frankie over to Timothy. Back to Playmaker. And Buck is up the left-hand side to Karani. Timothy with a great back check. Intercepts that one. Frankie through the middle to Playmaker. Playmaker has it poke checked off his stick, and Dream Mickey's going to work it out here for the Eagles in this tight 1-0 game here for the Phantoms. Good stick lift by Timothy. Timothy shoots, and a great glove save by Tightdown. It might have not resulted in a goal, Tegan, but what a play by Timothy on that stick lift to create that turnover and give himself a chance. That was about to be a solid opportunity for her left to get into the offensive zone and establish something, but all Timothy there denying that, getting a chance for his team. Frankie rips one off the face off and a walker saved by Tight Down and Dream Mickey works it out for the Eagles. Here's Dream Mickey. 
Trying to just get a quick pass and over onto the inside, but it's going to be taken away by Dream Mickey again to the left-hand board. Dream Mickey, Vibholm shot is on, and a blocker saved by Dan. Here's Suits, Sandello, and that one trickles through the crease as that takes us to the end of the second period. And we finish how we started this period, a one nothing lead for Deadly Phantoms, but it didn't mean that we were shorted of action at all because man, did we have plenty of close calls and plays between both of these sides as you see a replay of the big hit right there. And it's been one of those things, Tegan, where Herlev, they've had some zone time, they've had a few chances, but they just have not been able to see one through past the net and past the goalie and Danmo. It's a one nothing battle here for the Deadly Phantoms against the Hurl of the Eagles. 11 shots to six. It's really been all Phantoms, and it really starts in the back end, Brandon. Yeah, it does. As it feels like Deadly Phantoms have done a better job locking in on their own end. As you have to remember, Hurl of the Eagles, they had about two minutes of that time on attack in the first period. So that time on attack that they had to start this game slowed down a little bit. And that defense turned into chances for great offense for Deadly Phantoms. So I know obviously they might have not got the goal in that period, but they do have that one nothing lead they're holding on to. That's why those opening goals that are early are so, so big to have for reasons like this. Puck behind the net is Karani. Karani back to Dream Mickey. Dream Mickey into the middle. Sooth is checked, and it's going to be sent all the way back down. First onto it's going to be Psycho. As we start off this third period, Deadly Phantoms in white, Eagles in black. One nothing game. This is game number one of a two game series here tonight. What a pass to Playmaker. All alone, he's poke checked away. Great defense by Dream Mickey and Sandel to close in. Timothy back to Frankie. Over to Timothy, who wraps it around behind the net to Playmaker. Dream Mickey. Thanks, that one off the wall. I think it's going to go all the way down. No icing on the play. The refs put their whistles away. Timothy, good give and go play with Frankie, and he gets it up the left hand side. Give and go with him as well, but it's poke checked off by Vibholm. Vibholm up to Karani. Eagles try and break in. They're forced off at the line here by Timothy. And what defense Timothy has played as a winger here, Brandon. Yeah, he's been amazing, and he can contribute a little offensively here, too, as he has the puck on the stick. We'll see if he can maybe capitalize, but it's so fun to see a winger contributing so much defensively as a forward. Typically, it's not often that you'll see that to this extent, but some of the turnovers that he has caused has turned into opportunities for this Delhi Phantoms team. It's so valuable for any team to have that. 14 minutes to go in the third period, and that faceoff is one and shired wide from the point, and then a defensive zone penalty, and... The Deadly Phantoms are going to head to the power play. Now, remember, we talked about the special teams a little bit, and neither of these two sides have been great on the power play, but they've been phenomenal on the penalty kill. So it's going to be a bit of a weakness of Deadly Phantoms versus a strength of her left Eagles. If they can maybe step up and correct some of those wrongs they've had this season, could be huge for the chance to win with the way this game has played out. Face off has picked up Timothy. Sent that one all the way back into his own zone, and the Eagles don't mind that as they sit back and trap up here. Psycho gets that one drop back to Jur. Jur to Timothy. Timothy trying to walk that one through. He poke checks it off Sue's stick, and it's held on by Tightdown. Yeah, not a bad start to the penalty kill of her left Eagles as they didn't really allow too high danger of a chance. A decent little chance for Deadly Phantoms, but not anything that you're going to be too worried about there if you're Tightdown and company. He's off in the offensive zone. Wait, look at, I, I don't think I've ever, what a goal here by the Phantoms. This playmaker comes down off one of the most skilled face-off plays I think I've ever seen, Brandon. Yeah, I almost wish I could see the full replay of that because I was looking at how that play started and it was a tie-up and it, I, I think Jurex came in. And yeah, lefty that was win. the most creative face-off play that I think I've seen in the pro division that was absolutely amazing and it might have not resulted into the immediate goal but it resulted in a goal nevertheless and it all started from that start of possession a great job from deadly fans to take advantage of that power play i owe the phantoms an apology as they stunned me they dropped my jaw on that face-off play it was a tie-up lefty win backdoor play uh very very good it didn't work brandon but it puts them ahead two to nothing nonetheless is the scramble play puts it in the back of the net. 
10 minutes to go here in the third period. It's going to be Jurex up to Playmaker to Psycho. Psycho drops that one for Playmaker. Playmaker. Good pass back to Jur. They give and go, but that one's read by Sooth. Sooth, the 200-foot center. Over to Karani. Karani to Dream Mickey. Look for the give and go to Karani. Karani gets it right back. It's poke checked off his stick. Puck behind the net. Here's Jur. Jur sauces that one up, and it's going to be Timothy. Timothy all alone on tight down. He comes in and tight down with a great diving save to stop this from going to a 3 0 game. Jur gets that one down to Timothy, but the Eagles pressuring here. It's going to be Karani. Karani spins looking back door for Sooth, but couldn't connect. Frankie, good defense by him. He gets it up the left hand side, and eventually the puck gets the playmaker to Timothy, and that one's offside. Yeah, and that's a huge save there from Tigdown because if it goes to a 3 0 game, the Deadly Phantoms more than likely put a wrap and a bow on this one as it looks like her love going to take a timeout. But I can't help but to go back to that second goal there from Deadly Phantoms, Tegan. That was a great play. And like you mentioned, that faceoff play, it might have not been from the goal itself, but. Everything happens from something that happened before it in this game. It's one of those things to where if you don't have one action at least before it, more than likely you're not going to get that goal itself. So they may have not scored on the initial play, but the faceoff play itself is what led the puck to be in that position and caused that to happen. That might have probably been the most creative faceoff play that I've seen in the entire year of an HL22. And it very well could be the play that puts Deadly Phantoms into a two point win. That was an absolutely gorgeous play. I couldn't agree more, Brandon. Uh, I think that's one of the best I've seen so far. Is it's going to be Jur with it at the left-hand point. He drops that one down low to Psycho to Playmaker. Playmaker battling in the corner. Tried to get that one behind the net. Dream Mickey intercepts. And it's going to be battled for on the left-hand side. Seuss comes up with it for the Eagles, and they break out. Sandello just over the red line, looking for a pass. Can't get it over the line. That one's offside. Herlev Eagle is going to have to really push the issue here. It's one thing being down one to nothing, but now you're down two to nothing in time, continuing to not be on your side, even more so with that deficit doubling. So going to have to really push the issue. Don't be shocked that they maybe get a little bit more aggressive than they have been. I feel the sense of urgency coming, Brandon. As Sandello gets that one over to Dream Mickey. And Seuss brings it in. He can't get around Psycho. Psycho doing a great job to hold the line, and Timothy poking that one ahead. Psycho with the interception. Tries to get it down low to Timothy and does. Timothy, saucer pass out from Vibholm, comes out to help out his defense and carries it out with only a minute and 30 left to go. Eagles dump the puck in. Frankie's first on the puck, though, for the Phantoms. Gets it over to Jur to Psycho, and that one's given away with a minute to go here in period number three. The Eagles need two, and an offside won't help. Yeah, not going to help, but what will help is that this is the slow minute here, so they're going to have 53.4 real-time seconds to try to get back into this thing, but they're going to have to find a way to break this defense of Deadly Phantoms. They have been phenomenal in front of Dan Bull, and so far it doesn't look like they're going to let anything up. Let's see. Here comes Psycho trying to fire that one on. He's battling a Dream Mickey there, trying to get closer to the net, but can. Here comes Karani over to Vibholm. Vibholm drops it back to Sue. Sue comes in with a shot. He's intercepted and taken away by Frankie. And look at the speed on him. Ahead to Timothy. Timothy between the legs tries to drop that one back. Intercepted by Vibholm and the puck goes the other way. I bet that was an Omaha play that accidentally went off the sidewall. Sue drops it at the line for Sandell. He looked over to the left-hand side for Dream Mickey. He was watching out for Timothy, who was still getting up from that big hit behind the play. Here's Psycho on the right-hand side. 15 seconds to go, Brandon. I think this might be the dagger here as that shot is on. Great save by Tightdown. And with eight seconds to go, the Deadly Phantoms are going to come out with the win here and get a 2-0 victory with Dan Mo with a big shutout to end the game. How about that for Dan Mo? We kind of talked about it coming in, how he didn't have the best start to his ECL Pro season, his first ECL Pro season, but what a better way to kind of right that ship than to get a shutout and make multiple big saves in this game in the process. He really was a big reason the Deadly Phantoms were able to stave off a couple of the runs that her love Eagles had, and it's a well-deserved result for him. He'd love to see a player like this come in, get a shutout, play well, and contribute to his team getting a big win. Definitely did contribute to his team getting a big win. And how about that face-off play and the passing plays done here by the Phantoms to walk away with a strong W in this one to help out their goaltender?
Absolutely. And I think that a lot of that has to do with something that you mentioned. You know, I know obviously you're a great play by play guy, but you can analyze a good bit as well yourself, my friend. As you mentioned the chemistry that this Deadly Phantoms team have, they played together for so long. They have that chemistry, and it just feels like the amount of organization and cohesion that they play with, there's not many teams that can match that. It feels like more times than not. And you really saw that displayed here in this game with that face off play, with a couple of the passing plays that they had in the offensive zone as well as both of their goals came off of really good passing plays where the puck was right where it's supposed to be and it just always felt like that next pass they knew exactly where the teammate they were going to was at and more times than not they would connect and hit it right in stride and there is that face off play we see and it was just a bobbled back door and you know what the predictions were strong for the Hurlev Eagles but the Phantoms came out and took a huge W with some very gorgeous plays here in the ECL Pro brand and as we'll take a look at another one here yeah, as this was the opening goal of the game. Yeah, that is. And that, that's just a beautiful pass there from Timothy, who I also think was a big reason the Deadly Phantoms play as well as he did. Some of the work that he did defensively to create a few turnovers. And as you see, a great pass from him right there to open things up. But how about Deadly Phantoms, the underdog in this game? I actually didn't really think that they would be, considering as well as they have played as high as they are in the standings. But the shot we're feeling the Hurlap Eagles. And for those that went with the Deadly Phantoms, they... Nice little cash out of points there for whoever went with that side at that 35%. Yeah, Brandon, exactly. They came against the odds and scooped up a huge W. And there's another game that the Eagles are going to get a chance at. And they played very well, but it was just Dan Mo and those amazing passing and faceoff plays that was the edge in this hockey game. Otherwise, it was pretty even. Absolutely, and I think that you have to credit a few of the defensive efforts as well that they had when they were back there. As you saw, Herlev Eagles, only six shots on net. So after about the first 20 to 25 minutes where Herlev were kind of pushing the issue a bit, things slowed down a good bit for them after that point. So I think you have to credit Deadly Phantoms for not allowing Dan Mole to have too many opportunities in front of him that were high danger. But at the same time, you have to have a goalie that is able to make those saves when you need him to and make the saves that he's supposed to. Dan Mole did exactly that. As we see sometimes, Teague, and the difference in the game can be letting up that one soft goal. Dan Mole was really, really sharp in this game, and the defense was just as sharp in front of him. And we'll see if they continue to be just as sharp as we get a word from our sponsors. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. And we saw an amazing, amazing hockey matchup earlier this morning. We are back for more ECL Pro on Sports Gamer GG. I am Tegan. It's King Line Blair. He is Brandon B. Major Bigsby. And we had the Group 1 battle earlier today, Brandon. And now we're getting the Group 2 battle tonight. And word on the street is there's been a bit of fluctuation in the latest results. So we'll pop back over and take a look at that. Especially in Group 2, which directly affects both Deadly Phantoms and Herlev Eagles. You see Fiasco and Visu Gaming. Visu, remember, they were kind of in that deadlock from 2 to 7. So that's a huge result that they dropped their first game. So with Deadly Phantoms winning and Visu losing, they would go above them automatically as of now. And a few other scores coming in, Sinister versus The Hordit. Ghetto Firebirds, WannaCry, both of those games 3 to 2 in overtime. And then obviously the matchup we covered earlier, Justin, with Hawaii Hockey and Reality Check. So you're kind of seeing Group 2 starting to kind of shift around a little bit, Teague. And it's been something we've talked about, how much of a parody and how close and how tight things were in that playoff race, especially from 2 down. You're seeing that start to kind of shift a little bit as some of these results come in and change. Right, Brandon. And since we have had a look at some of these results in Group 2, why don't we pop over and take a look at the standings for Group 2 as we might see some fluctuation as the point race was so tight, Brandon. Yeah, as you can see, we talked about Deadly Phantoms having a chance to move up the standings. They do just that. They are now up to number two as of now, having the tiebreaker over run and score with a game in hand. And you see, as we talked about Vaisu Gaming losing their game, they dropped down to five. So that's just an example of how these things can really shift with just a couple of results coming in here and there. And keep in mind, things not done because Vajo Lakers, they have four games in hand on run and score and three games in hand on everyone else. So there is a lot that can change here in the standings, especially with Hurlap Eagles and Deadly Phantoms with one more game to play. 
Well, they definitely do. Erlev Eagles against Deadly Phantoms. You see the respective lineups in the bottom left and right hand corners of your screen. We have the Phantoms going up the ice in red. The Eagles coming down the ice in white. And here we are at Sports Gamer GG at the ECL Pro Division. I want to thank our amazing sponsors at Kovalon Lakritzi. Wilhelm and ST Hockey as we get underway with Brandon Bigsby and its King Line. Puck behind the net is Sandello going to be breaking it out here for the Eagles. Sandello claps that one down the right hand side. Good job by Timothy. We see him playing strong defense once again as that one's chopped behind, but an early power play here, Brandon, for the Herlev Eagles. Maybe this is what the Herlev Eagles have needed. We saw that in game one, it was the quick start for Deadly Phantoms that really put them through for the rest of that game. And now they get on the penalty kill. They don't allow for them to maybe get that quick start. Herlev, rather, could get that quick start for themselves. They're going to have to be a little bit better on the power play here than they have this season. We talked about how that was a weakness for them. Going to have to try to step up here against a really strong Deadly Phantoms PK and see if they can do it. Timothy just throws that one all the way down the ice. One thing I do notice is Timothy popping up in that right D position and he definitely knows what he's doing back there, but Sooth gets that one to Karani, who drops back to Sandello. Over to Vibholm. Eagles move the puck around here on the power play to Sooth, and what a toe save by Dan Mull as he continues to keep pucks out of the net, Brandon. Yeah, it's a great save there from Dan Mullen. We talked about him not having that great start, but getting that confidence going. The better he does going in the pro, a big save like that helps it a lot. This playmaker coming through, trying to sauce that one in front is... Puck is carried out by the Eagles. Reality check taking a 2-0 series win in our series earlier. And we're going to see if the Phantoms can do the same here as we get a great glove save there from Tyke Down. Yeah, and Tyke Down, I think that despite the result, very, very solid game for him as it was one of those things to where you can only do so much as a goal. You make those big saves, but you just kind of have to hope that things can turn around in front of you. Didn't happen for them in game one. We'll see if things can happen in game two. They may not score in that power play, but they did get some offensive momentum going. We'll see if they can come Mandelo trying to get that puck up to Dream Mickey. Here's Timothy. Oh, checked off as he got that puck to Playmaker, but a good job by the Phantoms to at least get it out to the neutral zone. Sandello claps that puck in. It rings all the way around. Vibholm, good job by Playmaker, and here goes Frankie. Three on two with the Phantoms. Timothy, what a pass across Frankie. Back door on the rebound, and he scores. How about that play from Frankie? I think he deserves a lot of credit for coming in on that play and not sitting back. You never know what's going to happen when you have somebody in like that where Psycho Skills was. You don't know if he's going to score it or not, but Frankie kept that play going, noticed that puck was out there and crashed the net and had nothing but an open net and white mesh behind him to put that in. A great play there from Frankie. Great recognition. A guy that's about a point per game coming in, and he bases a 1-0 lead for Deadly Phantoms. Timothy just continues to impress, impress me, Brandon. What a saucer pass as that one got across and Frankie was there to eat up the rebound and the Phantoms capitalize on that three on two to make it a one nothing game. Here's Timothy, another three on two here for the Phantoms. Psycho, Psycho, back door to Playmaker, backhanded on and a great save, tight down. Yeah, big save from Tyke down, but I want to kind of piggyback off of something you said with Timothy. He's been really impressive, obviously, both on offensive and defensive purposes. But you have to remember, he only played four games this season coming in, so he's not a guy that's gotten a lot of action. But when he's been in there, he's been impressive. So just continuing to do a great job when his number has been called upon by this de Deadly Phantoms team. I don't know if they would be in the position to win the game. Walk behind the net as the Phantoms go to work. Timothy. Timothy shoots. That one's blocked by Dream Mickey. He tried to get it out. Couldn't get it past Timothy. Phantoms go back to work in the offensive zone. Shot is on. That one's blocked. Sooth picks it up. Dream Mickey carries the puck out. And here he goes out of the zone. Vibholm helping out and good puck support. Trying to get that one in deep. He finally does. But the defense here of the deadly Phantoms is a deadly. Here comes Jer. Jur X in the left-hand corner. Behind the net to Psycho. Psycho drops that one on a bank pass to Frankie, who tried to move it out front, but it goes off the back of the net. Frankie wraps it around to Timothy, covering at the point. Back to Frankie, give and go. Looking in the high slot, intercepted by Vibholm, and that's probably a smart clear just to kind of slow things down, as this has been a very, very strong first period for the Phantoms. 
Yeah, it's been a relentless attack by the Deadly Phantoms, and I'm with you. I don't mind that clear out at all, just to take a deep breath, reset things, and give yourself a chance on the defensive zone face how to maybe win it again now if you're in zone. Face off is going to be won by Vibholm. Gets that one over to Dream Mickey up to Sooth. Good drop passes. Sooth took a hit to make a play. Good job at the line, though, by the Deadly Phantoms, as they're just not letting the Eagles into their zone as they can't get past Frankie once again. Frankie drops that one to Timothy and it goes over the left hand side. Dream Mickey back to Sandello. Sandello trying to get the puck in. Eagles trying everything. Spin pass over to Psycho from Timothy. And he couldn't get the shot on. Karani moving the puck out for the Eagles at the left hand side from his own side of center. And that will be icing with two and a half to go. Yeah, and we've kind of seen that be a bit of a theme in the last few possessions where they've had to just kind of get it out as fast as they can to slow things down from the Deadly Phantoms because of how great they've been on the attack. So it's been kind of interesting to see, but we kind of wonder if Deadly Phantoms can maybe capitalize and take advantage of this pursuit that they've had. Here's Sandello. Back over to Psycho to Timothy. That puck's brought in onside. Timothy down low to Psycho, looking out front, nobody home. Puck picked up at the point there by Jur. Jur drops that one to Timothy. He shoots, and that one sails wide. Frankie, he holds it in at the line, tries to get it down low. Vib home battling for it. Playmaker takes it away here for the Phantoms. Not much time left. Eight seconds to go. Timothy spins behind the net, trying to look for a lane out front. He finally does, but it goes off the skate of Vib home is playing very, very good winger defense in his own zone there, Brandon, and that'll take us out of period number one. Yeah, the defense has been solid for both of these two sides so far, especially with Herlev Eagles being pinned in their own zone so much. You really have to credit them for keeping this at a one-goal game, despite a lot of that attack being from the Deadly Phantoms. But nevertheless, it is going to be Deadly Phantoms with that one nothing lead going into the second. And how impressive have they been as a unit? You can see it with some of the numbers. Five shots on that, three minutes plus of time on attack. And we're only 20 minutes in. Just the way these guys can stay in the offensive zone and not allow their opposition to really be able to get out of their own zone. So, so impressive as we get a look at that first goal that got us here. And what a goal it was. And how about Frankie? We talked about activating from the point and he comes down on that three and two and cashes in pretty heavily. Yeah, and that's kind of what I was referring to there. His ability to kind of recognize that he had that open space to be able to do that. And we always talk about this, Tegan, being at the right place at the right time. You never know what can happen and how you'll be rewarded for that. Frankie did a great job recognizing that he had the space to be able to take that up. The puck bounced out to him after that initial shot. And he was the beneficiary of that goal. Just a high IQ from the captain of this team and a great player that's been great for them offensively all year. Period number two underway here in the ECL Pro. You have your respective lineups in the bottom left and right hand corner of your screen on here on Sports Gamer GG. Puck behind the net. Here's Jur. Jur up the left hand side. Timothy drops that one for Playmaker, and the spin passes are a plenty in this game, Brandon. Yeah, we've seen a few of those attempted so far. Some have worked better than others. A nice job, though, that time from Hurlap defending that one. Maybe they expected it after about the third or fourth time they tried at this game. That one's chopped over. Here's Vibholm. Vibholm trying to clear that one up. No can do. It's still held on the right-hand side. Sandello over to Sooth. Sandello drops that one in left-hand side. Still battling for it. Good job by Karani to hold on for the Eagles. Out to Sooth, back to the point of Dream Mickey. Poked off, though, by Psycho. Good thing Sandello was back and good puck support. As Sooth dumps that one in, he's offside. And a little bit of frustration coming out of the Eagles here, Brandon. Yeah, you can't blame them. You have to remember they didn't score at all in that last game, and they have not found much offensive success in this game either. So after a while, that kind of gets to you a little bit mentally when you don't have a lot going for you. Got to keep your composure, though, and just try to keep getting out to get back into this game. You're still gonna. His second period here, 12.26 to go. Deadly Phantoms still with a hard lead here. Up one to nothing, but a flip of a coin can change that. We'll see what we get on the faceoff. Frankie over in the good block there by Vibholm, and he's been very good defensively here for the Eagles. Frankie over to Timothy. He shoots that one on. It goes off a of body and wide. Sandello, Sue. That one still played ahead. 
Here's Jerk. Ronnie intercepts. He's all alone. Spins, but he can't get around Frankie. Great defense. Playmaker ahead to Psycho. Drop pass over to Timothy. What an area pass that was, Brandon. Just laying it over for him to collect. That one shot across over onto the left-hand side. Psycho lays it down deep into the zone. It's intercepted, and Sooth eventually clears it down the right, but Frankie picks it up for the Phantoms and clears it up. Playmaker sends that one in left-hand side. Timothy first to the puck. No, it's going to be Dream Mickey who carries it over here for the Eagles. A lot of neutral zone hockey here, Brandon. Yeah, and I think the Deadly Phantoms are completely fine with that, holding this 1-0 lead while on the opposite side of her left Eagles, they're kind of sick of this play. They've been in the neutral zone and in their own zone, and that's really been about it. We haven't really seen them be able to test the Deadly Phantoms too much. Dan, Dan excuse me, Dan Mo had that big save early in the game, but aside from that, only the one shot on that for her left Eagles. So some of that frustration we talked about earlier because of that inability. So we'll see if they can maybe break past that here. Here's Vimpom, oh, Brunsuk, what a save, but he scores on the rebound, but it's going to be called back, oh no, as we'll check here, Brandon, is yes, this one definitely oh, going to be called goodness. back, what a first save by Dan Mo, and he collects the second as well. And that's very unfortunate. I know people have their opinions on those because when he made that initial pass, he didn't necessarily keep Dan Mo from getting in position to make the second save. But if you make contact with the goalie, nine out of 10 times, they are going to call that a penalty and they're going to take that goal off. Unfortunate there for her left Eagles, but it does have to feel good to see that puck going in that and know that you were able to at least beat Dan Mo once. Now you just have to do it again and hope this time it counts. That's exactly right, Brandon. Something to build on, right? You know pucks can get past him. He's been an absolute wall tonight. And now you know you can beat him. So it's just finding out that correct play. Yeah, just finding that correct play and then capitalizing on it. And I think the big thing, too, for her left Eagles is at this point, considering they haven't had a lot of zone time, just put that puck on that and see what happens. They were able to get an opportunity there and take advantage. So they know they can score. Just have to put themselves in position to get those opportunities that they can take advantage of. Ronnie puts it between his legs and goes offside there, Brandon. And, you know, there was a little frustration from the Eagles, but they've really turned it up here, and they just need to kind of build on this momentum that they've carried through here in the second period. Yeah, that's the big thing is turning that frustration into want to more than anything. Obviously, it's understandable to be frustrated being scoreless for as long as you have things not necessarily going your way in the first five periods of play, but you have to find a way to get past that and find an answer. Being frustrated isn't the answer to getting back into this game and finding results. So I credit them for kind of trying to turn things around and hopefully for their case, it finds their way into a goal to tie this up. Ronnie tries to drop that one down low. Poke checked off by Bib home in the offensive zone. What a great job there by Jurex. Gets it over to Frankie. Frankie brings it up the right-hand side to Timothy into Playmaker, who moves it over to Jurex. And that's just fantastic passing by the Phantoms to get the puck in. I think Psycho Skills caught himself a little bit offside there, but, you know, the passing in the ECL Pro in the neutral zone is some of the best I've seen worldwide, Brandon. Yeah, I have to agree with you. We've seen many of the top teams that play well and are able to win consistently have that ability to pass it so well in the neutral zone. Deadly Phantoms having the chemistry that they have, you can see why they're so good at the moment. Here's Vibholm. Tried to backhand that one on. It's taken away, but given right back and right back. And a little catch played there to end the second period. But the Eagles are going to want to keep the puck for themselves going on to the third. Yeah, and it's one of those things where just like in game one, where we go from period two to period three, tied at one to nothing, we have the same result here in game two. And I think there's some positives to build upon here. If you're her left Eagles, obviously you would have loved for that tying goal to have counted. That was waved off. But nevertheless, you did get a few shots on net and you did see, like I've mentioned before, you can beat this goalie in Danmo and beat this defense that the Deadly Phantoms have had. You just have to put yourself in position to get that chance. They've been solid on the face-off circle. Their, fa their passing percentage has actually even been a little bit better than Deadly Phantoms. It's just they've not been able to break past the defense and establish the zone consistently. If they can do that, get a few chances while they're there, they know they can maybe find a way to tie this game up. Just have to keep doing what they're doing defensively to hold this Deadly Phantoms team off and hope that Tyke Down continues to make some of the saves he has been as well. As we start out period number three here, Phantoms against Eagles. Phantoms leading one nothing in the ECL Pro at Sports Gamer GG. With the Erlev Eagles lineup in the bottom left-hand corner, Deadly Phantoms in the bottom right. 
And the Eagles need a goal, Brandon, as Karani brings that one in. It's onside. Down low to Sooth. Sooth holds it in the corner, drops that one back to Karani. It's intercepted, though. And Playmaker drops that one over to Jur up the left-hand side. As Timothy tried to spin around Dream Mickey, but Dream Mickey takes the puck away and up. Sorry, the puck goes up to Sooth. Dream Mickey now. Dream Mickey back door. What a pass! And to Karani, and he scores. And the Stripes can't wave that one off. It was all clean for her love Eagles there, Tegan. And a great passing play. And that's exactly what we talked about. You just have to keep at it, keep going, and hope that eventually you can break through when you get those offensive opportunities. Her love Eagles does so right there with a beautiful set play to the front of the net. And all of a sudden, we have a tie game that won a piece early in the third. And uh, the, you were right, Brandon. The Eagles know they can beat Dan Mole after getting that goal, and now they're putting their themselves to work as Vibholm. Down low to Karani, looking to score again, but he couldn't get the cut he wanted. And Timothy carries it over the line. Drops that one back to Psycho, poked off by Vibholm. He's been a very, very good two-way forward in this hockey game. It's Jur up to Timothy. Timothy tried to sauce that one into the middle. It's taken away by Sandello, up to Karani. Ronnie to Sooth, taken away by Playmaker, and the Phantoms go the other way. That one's off a of body. Frankie has a poke checked off his stick. Karani gets it into the zone. Nice move to open up a little bit of ice, but it's taken away there by Psycho, who carries out the other way. Psycho skills down the left hand side with speed. What a move into the middle, but he can't get the shot off. Playmaker behind the net to Psycho. He rips one for the right hand side. Easy toe save for takedown. And that puck's given away to Jur. Timothy comes back in for the Bantams. He's bumped hard off the puck, but it stops. Psycho all alone in a bump from behind by Dreammaker. He jars the puck loose, Brandon. And what good defense that is. Puck carried into the offensive zone here. It's going to be dropped all the way back out into Eagles territory. And they just dump it right back in. Offside. Eagles have to tag up. And Jur carries it over to Frankie. Back to Jur on the give and go through the middle. Right hand side to Timothy. Timothy, good pass, and what a better save by Tyke down as Timothy hits the cut to Playmaker, but a gorgeous save by Tyke. Vib home now on the right hand side. Stops up. Goes over to Sooth. Sooth drops that one back to Vib home. Rings it around back to Sandello. Sandello to Karani. Good puck movement around the outside as the cycle goes to work, but it pops loose to Psycho. Psycho trying to get a cut to, to the middle of the lane, and he finally does, but he's getting absolutely harassed. Still comes up with the puck, puts it on, and a good save by Tech Down once again is he's been fantastic here in the third period, Brandon. Yeah, a few big saves from Tyke down to keep this at a tie game. And he was great in game one, as we mentioned, despite not getting to the result. Now his team is square in this game, and he is showing why he has been such a good boy for this whole time. Here's Frankie into the middle of the playmaker. Good pass as that one goes all the way up the ice on the right-hand side. Timothy back to Frankie. Give and go play. Timothy down low. Playmaker. Playmaker below the goal line. Finds a pass to Timothy as the Phantoms go to work here on offense. Back down to Playmaker. Playmaker to Frankie. The give and go. Shot is on. It's loose out front. But a great job by Dream Mickey to eat up the rebound. And the pass is ahead to Vibholm. Vibholm tries to put a little backhand behind the back pass into the middle that's intercepted. And Sandello retrieves it in the neutral zone. Tries to carry it back in right away. Sooth. Poke checked off his stick by Timothy. We'll see if Psycho can get to the puck first. No icing on the play regardless. Sooth. Up to Karani. 1-1 hockey game with a minute to go. Seuss comes in, shoots, it's loose in front, and Dan holds on. Yeah, big save there from Dan Mull with exactly a minute to go. But Segan, how about the Hurlough Eagles? They've looked like a completely different team here in the third period, really applying that pressure. And it's been a minute since we've seen Deadly Phantoms consistently establish the zone the way they did so well early on to this game. Going to be interesting to see what happens here in the last minute. You're psycho. Psycho drops that one up to Timothy in the middle, and that almost went off the goaltender. Tight downs pad and into the back of the net. We've seen that one too many times, Brandon. Yeah, we have that one little odd bounce to where if a guy is right where he needs to be to take advantage, it can be put right back in past the goalie. A nice drop from tight down being sharp there. Here's Vibhol. 
Vibholm backhands that one all the way down. And it's going to be Jur who's first to the puck with 30 seconds to go. Over to Timothy. Timothy. Good pass ahead. Here's Playmaker. Playmaker across. He tried to go back. I'm not sure if he expected the pass was so nice, Brandon. But it got there and nothing was made of it from Jur. Great pick up by Vibholm there too, being in position. That was amazing. Vibholm has been very good as he gets one out in front of him. A great blocker saved by Danville. As just as Brandon says it, he makes an amazing pass. Here comes Psycho. Good poke check there by Karani. And that's going to do it. We're going to extra hockey. And you notice her love there at the end, a smart play. They just went ahead and took that one at the boards and said, hey, we're going to just go ahead and take the point for the standings and try to earn the second here in overtime. But a nice job from them, even taking this to overtime with the way that this game was going through the first two periods of this one. And even if you want to say in game one as well, it didn't really feel like her love was going to find that tying answer. We've kind of seen a trend so far today, Tegan, where the team has scores the first goal and more times than not has been able to carry that momentum through and increase that lead and whoever their opposition has been has been able to get it close but not be able to tie it up and her love finally breaks that trend with the tying goal right here that you're seeing on the screen and here is that tying goal and what a gorgeous pass it is right in between the defender and the goaltender you couldn't have put that one any more perfect and they're gonna need a pass like that to carry out a w here tonight brandon but both teams walking away with a point yeah, that play threading the needle, but you said it to you again, walking away at the point. So Deadly Phantoms, regardless of the outcome, a solid day for them. Three out of four points is going to help them in the standings. While for her, Lev, being outside that playoff spot right now, really going to hope to get that extra point. Could mean a lot when we get to a standing season. It's Karani. Karani shoots in the backhand by Seuss. But two big saves as we start out overtime here. Her, Lev Eagles going against the Deadly Phantoms. 1-1 one, one hockey game at Sports Gamer GG at the ECL Pro level. Psycho behind it to Playmaker. Back door to Psycho and a great pad save by Tightdown. How solid has Tightdown been so far? Another big save from him right there. And a lot of his saves, not just being able to make big saves, but also being sharp as well. There's been a few plays to where the puck has kind of bounced in at an odd angle, but he's kept himself in the right position to be able to get on top of it and not allow anything crazy to happen. Up in the right-hand corner, Vibholm stripped to the puck. And here goes Playmaker, trying to make a saucer pass ahead. It's intercepted by Dream Mickey. Dream Mickey to Karani. Karani for the Eagles, back door to Vibholm, and he scores! What an overtime goal for the Eagles! And they climb ahead of the Deadly Phantoms in game number two. Fly like an eagle, Tegan. An amazing result for the Hurlev Eagles after being down in so much of this game. Find the tying score after their first tying score was disallowed. A little bit of frustration played in, but they kept at it, didn't give up, didn't let it get the best of them, kept themselves composed, and show why the mental game is just as important as the game itself as they fight back earn a point and then win it early in or overtime a well-deserved result for the hurl at eagles and a big second point picked up for their standings what a huge huge goal and from none other than bib home brandon he was great all game in the defensive zone and he comes down and gets the overtime goal here for the hurl at eagles and personally as somebody that watches these games and gets to cast these games luckily uh, it's so fun and so rewarding to see a guy that has contributed so much on the defensive end be able to contribute such a big play on the offensive end. I, I kind of mentioned earlier how he had that big pickoff play late in the third period that, in my opinion, may have denied a second chance scoring opportunities for the Deadly Phantoms. And in some of the other plays where he caused some turnovers, was in position to deny a few chances against a Deadly Phantoms team that take advantage of of those passes, those clean passes so well as they often do. Having those defensive plays are so, so important to any team. It's so rewarding to see a guy that makes those plays get rewarded with a game-winning goal like this. And who else but Vibholm to make it happen? Yeah, it couldn't have been anybody better. Uh, with a gorgeous pass over and Vibholm makes no mistake 
putting that one right over the blocker perfect placement brandon and speaking of placement that's gonna get them ahead isn't it in the standings brandon is they are gonna carry themselves even further up ahead yeah, that was a big two points there for her love. But like we mentioned, despite not winning that game in overtime, Deadly Phantoms, a solid point day. Three out of four points. They've put themselves in the second place spot about a point or two over Vajo Lakers as we'll take a look at the standings here a little bit later on. But so fun to kind of see how these things shake out. And it's interesting because we're kind of sneakily getting to the halfway point of the season, Tegan. So now games are becoming a little bit more important. They're coming in at a much more faster pace and the standings are ever changing, especially when you have a standings group like group two is that right. really from top to bottom is really close. A team that's in third right now can end up in 12th in a week's time. So it just goes to show right. you how important every game is huge, huge job there from deadly fans to get three or four and a nice job as well from her left Eagles to snag two points and keep themselves in the thick of that race. It is a tight pack. We'll see who else won tonight as we'll pop over and take a look at the latest results and see if that fluctuated our standings at all, Brandon. Yeah, it's Fiasco taking the second game against Vaisu Gaming. So Vaisu Gaming coming out with no points and Fiasco, a team that was in the eighth spot, getting four out of four points. So there's another example of how these teams can kind of climb up the board. And how about a team you're familiar with, Tegan? Jer Gordon. They get six out of eight points with three big wins today, only dropping one game against Morta IK, two to one. So that's just a few examples of how some of these teams in the thick of some of these playoff races are garnering points moving their way up the standings and like we said we're getting towards that halfway point of the season so the playoff race becoming a little bit more important with each passing game so important to pick up as many points as you can deadly phantoms her love jer gordon fiasco all of them doing exactly what they needed to do so far here today and let's take a look at those standings brandon as we do see a lot of games here in that group two and uh here we'll take a look at the standings in group one first yeah, the team that I didn't really get to mention that also picked up four points was the Torta. They won two games in overtime, so their ability to get some points, keeping up with Jer Gordon, who won six out of four or six out of eight points, is huge as well. So that's just another example of how in Group One also has a similar sort of race. It's reality check, you see dominant at that number one spot with 31 points. Hana HC right behind them. And then after that, pretty much kind of that same log jam from that point downward. So it's so interesting to see how these playoff standings are kind of shaking out. Going to be fun to watch as the standings continue to shake form. These teams continue to play their games. And keep in mind, there's a lot of teams that have games in hand as well. So some of those teams on the right side of the board could make their way over to the left here in just a few games time. You're absolutely right. You have teams like Your Garden Hockey on the left-hand side and uh, uh, Geeks Energy Esports with 20 games played. So a lot of fluctuation you're going to see on Group 1 side. But if you really want to see the board move, take a look at the standings here in Group number 2, Brandon, as we now have from last place in Group 2 to second place in Group 2, we have an only 12-point differential. Yeah, and it just goes to show you how much parity there is in Group 2 right here. This is a absolutely stacked group with so many talented teams. And it's interesting because they're even seeing some teams that were not in pro last season making really good runs. How about a team that we covered in their core final Philadelphia Academy with some games in hand right in the thick of that playoff race. Same with Prima Esport right in the thick of that playoff race. Her Life Eagles right in the thick of it. It's just so interesting to see how many of these teams are truly in a position to get themselves into a playoff spot, especially some of them with those games in hand, really with, an, with a, a, a chance to take advantage of it. So much of this can change and switch. Deadly Phantoms, Vajo Lakers, Viso, Fiasco, all of those teams really in the thick of it to where normally when you're in that position, you feel safe. This season, not so much. Yeah, you can't feel safe anywhere except for tomorrow you can feel safe as you can come in and check out some elite ECL hockey with my good friends Sin and Brandon B. Major Bigs B as he'll be casting tomorrow at 1945 Central European Standard Time. Havu Gaming against Yip Yavaskula and Farthestad BK against HV71. 
Yeah, these are going to be two great matchups. Highly recommend coming in and tuning into these two at 1945 Central European time. As we all know Havu Gaming, the history with them playing Yip Yavaskala, a team that has come back into the elite division and has really made their presence known. And obviously, Fetty is that one of the more consistent teams every single season playing an HV71 team that's been a pleasant surprise in a playoff position as of now. So if you want more great hockey on the elite level, make sure you tune in these two matchups because I know you will not be disappointed with some of the teams and talent that we're going to be displaying here tomorrow. Absolutely not, Brandon. All good stuff. If it's ECL Pro, if it's ECL Elite, it's a great stuff all around. I want to give a massive, massive thank you to everybody at Sports Gamer for their awesome hard work to be able to put this together. Of course, our producer behind the scenes in Guido, who is just a magician at everything he does. I want to thank Brandon, of course, B Major, uh, being here and the teams that played tonight. A great job by everyone involved. Our amazing sponsors, Ekovalon Lakretzi, Villain. Helm and ST Hockey. Brandon, any last words for the viewers out there? That's a big thanks for watching and happy to be able to call this with you, Tegan. It's been such a fun season to start out and as we kind of continue to move along and we get closer to the halfway point, it's going to be so fun to continue watching these storylines, these players and teams do what they love to do, playing this game on the big stage and seeing who can maybe take home that big championship at the end of it all. Just so fun, so happy to be a part of it and can't wait to continue calling games here at the ECL Pro with you. Guys, make sure you tune in tomorrow. That's right, tomorrow to catch up Brandon and Sin, as we just showed you, as that will be some great, great hockey. If not, you can come back and follow up with us on Tuesday. Have yourselves a fantastic evening from Sports Gamer GG.